Howdy folks, welcome back to Moondockery. Over the years I have been blessed with some truly amazing friends. And from time to time those amazing friends give me some truly wonderful gifts. And over the past few months, some of those amazing friends have given me some really wonderful gifts. I just thought it might be fun to go ahead and do a little show and tell of some of these items. Some of them I have actually waited to open up just for this kind of a video. It's not going to be a formal review. I really put things through the paces when I do reviews. But just something fun and interesting. Maybe introduce uh, all of us, including me, to new gear and just to sort of see what it does. Why don't you come along and check it out? The first two items were given to me by my dear friend and BIC J Neighbors. The first of which is the Gold Armor 10x12 Camouflage Camping Tarp. And the other is a Lixida Ultra Lightweight Multi Fuel Stove. Let's check them out. First thing we're going to look at is the tarp. This all started off by Jay posting some pictures of his hammock setup on Instagram. And I usually look at uh, those pictures on Instagram pretty close. And I noticed that the tarp had an X seam, which means it had two seams going from one corner to the opposite corner on the tarp. And I wound up asking a lot more questions about it. And I was very intrigued. I looked it up online, and even though on Amazon it only sells for $37.99, I just I, I, I couldn't afford to, to get it at the time. Well, the next thing you know, I wound up getting this in the mail. Now, right off the bat, I absolutely love the camouflage pattern. It blends in very well for the woodland that I'm in. And I'm an old school Cold Warrior vet, and our woodland pattern. For a lot of places uh, that are woodland, it's just a little dark. If you notice, these colors are much lighter, and I really like that a lot. Now this kit, and it is a kit that's in this, uh, it comes with the tarp, it's a 10 by 12, uh, it's called a Superfly, uh, they, uh, it comes with uh, six 3 meter guy lines, six guy line tensioners, four aluminum tent stakes, one small accessory stuff sack, and the Superfly stuff sack. It has a nice uh, cord lock, very high visibility cord, and this will be the first time I've taken it out. So we'll see. Okay, so here we have the tarp. Right off the bat, I can see some pretty cool um, eyelets, plastic eyelets. Nice little tie here. And here is the little stuff accessory pouch. And in it are three very nice, which these are pretty much my favorite style of tent stakes, by the way. These are a little different because they have multiple hook positions. And I have all the guy lines. Now, all of this together weighs 1.11 kilograms or two pounds 3.3 ounces and from everything I've seen on this it looks fantastic this tarp actually has 33 tie out points that is amazing my old multicam uh, tarp that I had custom made quite a long time ago back when uh, multicam was uh, still a a fairly new thing and a very expensive thing. I spent $200 for my 10 by 10 tarp. And um, since I've owned it, it's been stretched out. You've probably seen it on some of my other videos that I have to do different types of tie out options on it to get it good and um, taut. Um, but with uh, this X seam, which I'm really excited to see, uh, looks like it's going to be exactly what I need to prevent that type of stretching on the fabric to occur again. I'm going to go ahead and set this up in a standard uh, fly configuration like I normally do, and then we'll start checking it out in detail. I have the tarp set up in a standard A-frame configuration. 
I can already tell the camouflage pattern colorations are absolutely perfect for my neck of the woods at this time of the year. I counted out the tie-out points. It counted out to 25. The information that I read on Amazon said 33. They may have been posting information for a different size tarp because they make a lot of different size tarps. But 25 tie-outs is more than sufficient to anything that I would ever need them for. Let's go ahead and take a look at some of the details. The entire edge of the tarp has a tape sewn edging. The stitching looks pretty good. Uh, double uh, stitched here, zigzag stitch. You have a single stitch along all of the edging and underneath this area here has a triangular section of the same type of fabric that the tarp is made out of for a reinforcement. It appear, appears to be heavier stitched right along here with a darker um, thread, the same type of thread that's being used in the edging to hold on the webbing. The webbing actually comes all the way up to here, so it is actually sewn here, 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 and straight up through here. They've sewn the webbing on in through the same seam that they did for the tarp. The webbing is um, pretty, pretty thick, and it has these really cool plastic eyelets. That's on every single bit of webbing that goes around the tarp. It may be a little difficult to see, but the X seam that goes across is reinforced in the center by four panels of fabric. So this area here, uh, there's one, two, three, and on the other side, four panels that are double thickness. And if you want to use a center pole in the center, for any type of configuration, if you're setting it up like a TP style, you're going to have uh, much more fabric to play with. And with all of the reinforcements that all come to the center here, plus the addition of the eyelet on the webbing at the top, you don't have to worry so much about stretching or tearing of the tarp as you do with a tarp that is literally a single layer. Right here you can see the reinforcing that I just pointed out on the exterior. All of these seams have a very thick and very heavy waterproofing seam seal on these. And I am very impressed by that. It's a fabric that looks like a micro weave version of ripstop. And um, it has a, a, a heavier feel to it than my other uh, ripstop tarps. And uh, I'm very impressed with this. This is really nice right here. This is where the top uh, center webbing is with the eyelet. And that feels pretty thick. And uh, yeah, with all of this reinforcement, I don't think we're going to have any problem at all with this stretching out if I want to use a center pole for any type of configurations I use. I like to uh, set up plow points every once in a while. They're uh, really easy to do, especially for really good weather. And this type of a center section would work perfect for a center pole for that. I am really surprised on how big a difference it makes having an extra two feet on an A-frame tarp. My 10 by 10s, they'll cover what I need to, but it doesn't really provide any real extra room. And uh, with this, if I had a standard uh, ridge line going across the inside here, I could tie up my hammock up to it to get it up out of the way. And I could seat between four to six people in here in their camp chairs. For that matter, I could easily have, uh, there's enough room on either side, I could have my hammock hang and someone could be ground camping under here as well. But th this feels cavernous. I'm really liking this tarp. Even though this is the very first time I've ever set this tarp up, I already love it. 
in a standard A-frame configuration, I'm already sold. But when I see all the different tie-out possibilities, and I know all the different configurations that I can put a tarp in, I can't wait to play with this and do more things with it. I think it's a fantastic tarp. And especially if anyone's interested in, in trying one out themselves for $37.99, Amazon Prime, as of right now, I think it would be worth a try. I'm gonna play with this and put it through its paces and eventually down the road, I will do a review on this and let you know how, first of all, how well it's held up, all the different configurations I've placed it in and be able to give you a good, honest review on this. But right now, I'm enamored with it. It was an amazing gift from an amazing friend. Thank you, Brother Jay. And uh, now, I'm gonna go on to the stove. Next, we have the Lixida Ultralight Multi-Fuel Stove. Comes in a little nylon pouch. And in the pouch is a fuel basin, a ventilated base. You have the right and left side, the front, and the back. Put this together. Just slide it in those slots right like that. I will put the base in first. And then you can use it like this when you put the front on, or you can also put the fuel basin in, which you can definitely use it without the fuel basin. And then the front goes right down in and locks into position here. And that is <laughs> all there is to setting it up. Now, it is just a little bit wobbly, but once you have everything in position, you shouldn't have to mess with it other than lighting it and putting your stove, uh, your cook pot, right on top of the stove. Let's go ahead and get some fire in it. Now, the first fuel method I'm going to use is a solid fuel tab. So just put the solid fuel right in the basin. Get that all fired up here. Get a good flame. And I am going to boil 12 ounces of water for each fuel method or fuel source that I will be using with the stove. I'm going to put the lid on my trusty Pathfinder cup. Now, this will just fit on the stove. If you have a larger pot, it'll probably do a little bit better. I'll go ahead and bring you back when it comes to a boil, let you know about how long it took and how efficiently it did it. Now it's a little breezy today, so you can't really see it, but it is boiling. Steam's coming out and you can tell it's a breezy day. And um, I was surprised that with the openings that are here, especially this large opening, that with a fuel tab, that it might have a challenge getting this to a boil. But it was a relatively short amount of time, probably about five minutes, and uh, it was able to get 12 ounces of water to a boil. And um, I'm pretty pleased and impressed with that. I'll go ahead and get it set up for the next fuel type. The next fuel source I'm going to use is going to be a gel fuel. This is the one I'm going to use today. But you can also use like the Fire Dragon brand uh, gelled alcohol. The Sterno has other things in it other than alcohol, but predominantly it's alcohol. I'll go ahead and light it the same way I light my alcohol stoves. And by getting a little bit of that fuel on the stick, light that, put it right in, worked perfect. Now, I don't know how well this fuel is going to work with the, the breeze, but I guess we're going to find out. Get my cook pot up there. 
and I will bring you back when it's boiling. Now we definitely have a good rolling boil there. Uh, this took a little bit longer uh, than the fuel tab, just a little bit. Um, but this is the fuel is still going strong. I filled the basin about half full and it's still got a very strong flame. But by the time that the fuel tab had gotten the water to a boil, it was pretty much done. There wasn't a whole lot left to it. So I would say filling this up to about uh, a fourth to a third might actually be enough. I think I burnt through about half of what I've put in there. So I'm going to go ahead and clean the uh, basin out. And um, well, first of all, I'll just see how easy it is to extinguish. Hopefully it's as easy to extinguish as a fuel tab and just give her a a good gust of breath and yeah it went up very easily and it wound up burning through a bit more fuel than what I thought it did but that worked great it's the first time I've ever used uh, the sterno gel uh, as a heat source excellent well I'll go ahead and set it up for the next fuel source I just wanted to show you the amount of residue that was left over by the sterno fuel. It didn't burn completely out, but mostly. Uh, I've used the Fire Dragon uh, gelled alcohol in the past, and it burns almost completely out with no residue left over. But this should be a pretty easy clean out. I was, I was impressed with how well it performed. Probably use it again in the future. My next fuel source is going to be a Trangia alcohol burner. It's not large enough in diameter to fit through the same slots that the fuel basin fit in. So I'm just going to set this down on the base, which should be a decent height to be able to bring our pot water to a boil. And we'll just see how well this does. We'll bring it back when it's boiling. You can see how hot this is getting. The, the edges there are actually glowing red. It would surprise me um, how hot this can get and how quickly it cools down. Each time that I've done a, another uh, fuel source, it, within just a minute or so, it's cool enough to touch. So even though it may heat up, red hot literally it cools down pretty quick we are once again at a rolling boil and uh, it took about the same amount of time as it usually does with an alcohol stove maybe just a tiny little bit longer but uh, the distance from the burner to the pot uh, the openness of it with the breeze going I think it did very very well I'm gonna see if I can use the spirit uh, ring to extinguish this flame inside the stove because it's very small cavity without burning myself hey it worked great the last fuel source I'm going to be using is typically the one source that this style of stove is designed for in a twig stove fashion I'm just going to use one of these little um, we call them tumbleweeds little store-bought fire starters and I've cut what I call pucks which are very short thick pieces of wood I'm going to put some of those in there and then around those I'm going to put smaller twigs and all those should burn down pretty quickly once the uh, tumbleweed fire starter has completely exhausted itself and once those get down in the position those will all be low enough for me to be able to put the pot on let's go ahead and light that thing up as far as store-bought fire starters go 
these little tumbleweeds, and I know they go by different names depending on manufacturers, they do an absolutely fantastic job. They burn really clean, uh, no fumes, very little smoke, and they create a tremendous amount of heat. I use these with my chimney starters with my charcoal grill. We'll go ahead and let this get going, and once that dies down enough for me to put my pot on, I'll bring you back. Got a decent enough flame going on there. Here, put a pot on, and I will bring you back when it starts to boil. Now, as I suspected, by putting this um, amount of fuel in there with that um, fire starter I did, it got hot really fast. This was probably the shortest boil time of all the different fuel sources I use today. But because of the heat, it's also ignited my uh, stump I'm working with. So I'm gonna go ahead and take that off and extinguish the stump and the flame that's inside the stove. And I'll bring you back and let you know my final thoughts. All the flame has been extinguished and the stove has cooled down. And I have boiled several cook pots of water in this. And each time I boiled it, it got pretty hot. A couple times with the wood and I believe it was the gelled alcohol. Um, it got so hot it was glowing red. And after cooling down each time, as you can see, there's very little metal fatigue, very little distortion in that. And the small amounts of distortion that did happen is the bowing all went to the inside, which is actually a benefit. It'll actually hold the pot better that way. So I don't see any of that as being a problem whatsoever. I am very pleased with this little stove. For as lightweight and as compact as that is, that's going to find a permanent home in my bushcraft patrol rig. Of course you've had to have known that boiling that much water, I had to make myself a cup of joe, which I am enjoying quite thoroughly at the moment. I hope you enjoyed the little show and tell. It gives me a good little chance to get out and use the stuff that I get either through a gift which, by the way, thank you very much, Brother Jay. And whether it's a gift or a spur-of-the-moment purchase, without actually having to do a formal gear review, but keep in mind, I will be putting this tarp and that little stove through its paces, and in several months, I will be coming back with a thorough gear review on the tarp and the stove and letting you know how they've held up. Uh, I'll let you know the pluses and the minuses of the, these products. And that way, Maybe you can make a decision one way or the other whether or not this, these are things that you would like to have. As always, folks, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.